Time with Herman and Sharon. Enjoy, Sharon. Well, yes, hello. Enjoy the fresh air. <laughs> She's been living back here for so long. <laughs> I never know where I am, you know. <laughs> I know. Am I in Florida or I are there mountains with snow on them I, back there? I like your outfit. All right. Don't even bring attention to it, please. Why not? Well, I, it's just something I threw together today. <laughs> looks different, but I'm not sure it yeah, looks all right. She, but anyway, she'll, leave every, it to him to bring it up. Every once in a while, she'll put an outfit on and she'll come out and she goes, Linda, what do you, I can't control him. What can well, I say? What do you think of this? And I, I'll either go, hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, he liked it. Yeah. So yeah, that's like why I've yeah. got that. I think. So, all right. So she models things for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, we we have a model today. Yes, we uh, she, do. She, she could Looking be. Looking forward to it. She could be in the model industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's health today, but combined with spiritual growth. I mean, it's, that's the best. And the prayer. Best that's important. Combination, isn't it? Yes, it is. Wonderful combination. Hey, Dave, show them her display right there. It is on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's my guest sitting on the couch. She decided to leave the couch and come <laughs> to the show today. Would you That's welcome right. Aaron? Yes. Hello, oh, Aaron Porter, actually. Right. Yes. Thank you. you. Have a seat right it's here. nice Hi, to see you. So nice to see you, too. Thank you very much. Right here. See, I'm trying to be a gentleman. Okay. And, and, and are you recognizing that? I appreciate that? that. Okay, good. How you doing? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Well, we're we're happy. glad to have you. Her Thank favorite you. guy is Kaufman, right? I love Doug Kaufman. <laughs> he brought us some cookie dough. He was yes. uh, the inspiration, Cookies. actually. Yeah, I know. A lot of the inspiration yeah. from my you book. You talk about him in the book. He's our yeah. no wheat, gluten, no dairy, eggs, so, or preservatives. So that's right. Very clean. Yeah. yeah. So my Absolutely. sister can have these, right? She sure could. Yeah. So she's, she could eat She has to have gluten free. They look like everything. those are gluten free. Wow. Now why, why, I mean, this, yeah. this is pretty, it's pretty smart, you know, if you talk about a march, marketing mm -hmm. uh, idea, because these were sent uh, with the book. So it was, it was <laughs> yes. like, it was like, you know, have you ever sent, had those things sent in the mail, you know, where this, it's got your name with the little tape, you know, with your address and everything. Oh and, yeah. And they want a donation. Return address yes, stickers. Or, yeah. yeah. And, and they want to donate. And it, and you just can't use them unless you've sent them something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. very you, smart. Do you feel yeah. like that? Yes, it's very and it, smart. And it's kind of like when it's I got this, fun. I go, you know, she sent this. <laughs> I don't really want to interview her. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making up. But, but she sent this, so so I, I probably need to look at the book, so I did. Well, tell us about her. Well, I'm Herman. glad I sent the cookies. I didn't realize that's how, you know, we get you to read the book. See, isn't so that, I, yeah, yeah, was, right. was that your Was that your marketing <laughs> idea? Um, I, yes, I guess it was. Because <laughs> it really is. A, it just seems to me like a, a nice, healthy treat and a nice gift, you know, for somebody when you're sending right. the book. So sometimes when people order the book, I actually give them sometimes a free bag of cookie dough too. That is nice. That's great. You're, you're, uh, Get were, them on their start. Were you trained you know, in marketing? Eating. No, I was not. Okay. No. Erwin, uh, Aaron Porter, is the founder. Photographer, blogger, and recipe developer of Eat, Pray, and Get Well. Mm -hmm. She and her husband, Bob. You like him? Love Bob. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Eat, Pray, and Get Well, which is now more than a blog. They have a healthy line of Eat, Pray, Get Well snacks mm -hmm. available in retail stores. Smart and at the Tampa International Airport. That's where they spend most of their time, right? In that <laughs> airport. But, but this- They this, live here in Florida. This book is well done. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Are, are you the publisher? Uh, no, I had a publisher. It is well done, my but goodness. I but wrote the whole book. It is, uh, it really. Thank you. It is, I, I, let me, I don't know if Dave, if you can get, get uh, Tom over here, wherever. Is Tom, would Tom do it? Okay, who's on that camera? Preston. Preston. Preston over there. Okay. Hey, Preston. Uh, look at look at how this book is done. Look at it. But Beautiful. but I mean I mean it's not just showing you how to have great beautiful. I love presentation. Oh, look at that. Her presentations are just gorgeous. Yeah. But uh, there are applications, stories, 
and uh, like this one for example spicy fish tacos and 12 things I learned in the first year of marriage <laughs> can, can, I mean it's, it's like at, look at look at this one hey Preston look at that one Dave, Dave back there is like actually <laughs> is going to determine what we look at. He's my director. They're beautiful pictures. Look at that. I can see your photographer. Look, look at that. And look, look at this great. soup. Look. Broccoli, cheese soup. Oh, that looks goodness. great too. I just came off of a fast. I mean, this is <laughs> this is pretty nice. Look at look at this. Wow. I mean, and it, I tried to make it inspirational with the recipes because yeah. there are a lot of sad parts, well, you know. And yeah. there she and is, there she is kissing some man, right? <laughs> oh, that's your husband. Wedding day? Is that your husband? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, is this your kids? Yes. Okay, your kids are down. Where were they? I just th thought I just saw a pro. Yeah, there they are. There's your boy. You yeah. can you get that, Preston? Dave, actually. <laughs> okay, there's her kids. Okay, yes, look at that. Wow, that is neat. But it, it is a well done book. I mean, I, Thank you. I've got all kinds of little markers here that I want to. I want to. I want to uh, find out about your life, Erin. Tell us a little bit. It's a good about idea, you. Sharon. Uh, my life. I was born in the Bronx, New York. Really. And um, you had don't a. Have, you don't have much of that. No, void, I've been in Florida for twenty years now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. But I uh, had a difficult childhood. I talk about that in the book. Uh -huh. um, a very um, what angry happened? What happened? father. Okay. And um, tell, tell me about your dad. My dad was, it's, it's hard to explain, and so in the book is why I put short stories about my father yeah. so you can get a little idea of yeah. what my childhood was like yeah. because it was very unique. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. And he was a very angry, bitter man. I never really saw him smile or laugh unless it was at somebody else's expense. Did he ever tell you he loved you? No. No. In fact, um, he just pretty much rejected us, ignored us, walked into a room after he worked in Manhattan. He'd come home at night, um, no eye contact but would start looking for things wrong in the house, anything that he mm. can maybe rage over. So we were very skittish kind of children, sure. you know, making sure by the time he got home at seven o'clock, everything was perfect in its perfect place, but there was always something that wasn't uh, in its perfect place. If I and remember correctly, you were sitting with a boyfriend when he came home one time, right? Oh, wasn't a boyfriend. It was, um, I think I was about 15, 16 doing a school project at home. My mom was, was home. He was sitting on the step, right? He didn't come home on Wednesdays and Thursday nights. He stayed with his mother in the Bronx. And those were the two days a week we felt like we could be kids. We could laugh. He didn't like to hear us laugh. He didn't like to hear us talk loud. And when he did, he would come in and start yelling and reprimand us. So these were the nights that we could relax. And so I had my friend over for a project, and we were sitting on the stoop waiting for his mom to pick him up. And I see my dad coming up the driveway. My heart sunk. Hey, but, but, you, but, but the guy didn't know. He didn't know. He I was, hid that from everybody. I didn't have friends over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tried to hide that part of my life. And I, I didn't understand it. I thought I had no self-esteem. I thought if my own father doesn't like me, you know what's wrong with me? Okay, Aaron. Uh, what? Uh, let me let me just yeah. finish this story, okay, babe. That's what th this is part of the oh, story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you have you ever figured or found out what caused your dad to act that way? There had to be something in his life that caused him to hate life or everybody mm -hmm. in it so bad. I know he had a difficult child in his own or a childhood in his own right, mm -hmm. and I won't go too much into that. Yeah. Yeah. Part. Yeah. Um, whether it be mental illness is probably mm -hmm. part be, of it yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. What I wanted to say was that while you were sitting on that step mm -hmm. uh, and the young man was polite, like, hello there, mm -hmm. yes, to, to your father, yeah. and you thought, oh, my I goodness. Thought, that's the and, worst and thing And your you father, <laughs> he smoked apparently, yeah. and he flipped a cigarette in his face. He walked up the driveway. I saw the vein in his head, yeah. you know, you bulging. Thought, yeah. mm -hmm. He took the cigarette, yeah. and he flicked it at my friend's face. And I, I thought, this is as, ba as bad as it can get. So now I have wow. to explain, you know, what my father he, is like, what my childhood is. Was he like. afraid then, the young man, uh, at that point? No, in fact, he was one of my first friends that made me laugh. He got a little inkling into what was happening in my home life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, my father, when he flicked it, he said, I'm not in the mood. Because he said, hi, Mr. C, yeah, you know, yeah. how you doing? So when I'd see him in the hallways at school, I'd 
go up and I'd say, hi, Chris. And he'd say, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Joking. Yeah. And it would make so, me laugh. So and I thought, yeah. Yeah. this is so the he first the whole time thing I could laugh yeah. about what was happening at home. Yeah. So he was always angry and always raging. And um, mm -hmm. there wasn't another side. You know, there wasn't a loving side. I'm sorry. Uh, so... No, well, I did not have, have that. had a rough life too. My then. mother had a rough life, and I have a little bit about my mother's experience in there as well. But yeah. she finally did leave him after 35 years of marriage, mm -hmm. and she did remarried it? a wonderful. I got to experience what a father is like with wow, my stepfather that is in my neat. adult years. It's so neat. Yes. Yeah. And he loves me, and, and so he tells I, you he loves you. He tells me he loves mm -hmm. me. Yes. Yes, he, accept, he accepts me as my own, even though I'm an adult. <laughs> now, did, did your bringing up have anything to do with your first marriage because you, you, oh, you yes. went through a divorce? Okay. Oh, did, yes. Did you carry a lot of this into? I carried it not, into re, not only into relationships, but every aspect of my life was uh, turned upside down to the way I felt about myself, men, God, everything. Wow. You have to tell the story about how you met your current husband. My current husband, my Bob, um, so his late wife, she died of melanoma about 10 years ago. Melanoma. Melanoma. Wow. Now I knew Laura because our family, our parents uh, grew up in the same apartment complex in the Bronx. So we kind of knew each other before we were even born. Yeah. We ended up moving to Florida um, right down the street from each other. And um, I didn't know this till later, but about a week before she died, she sat down, Bob, and she said, I want to talk to you. Don't want you to be alone. I want you to move on. And, you know, I have somebody in mind for you. So <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I was you, on you her mind. You had no idea this was going on, right? No idea till about a year later. So he asked me on a date about a year later. And my mom happened to be with me when he asked me on that date. And I turned to her after and I said, Mom, I don't know. I don't know if this is right. What about the family? Our families are so close. And she said, I don't know either. You know, pray on it. And what I had found out was her father was praying on it for that whole year, every, church, every Sunday to go to church and pray that we got together. And his sisters were rooting, or I'm sorry, Laura's sisters were rooting for us to get together as well. Wow. And when I found that out, I was just honored, and, and I fell in love with him, and I feel like God put us so, together. So yeah. it was an arranged marriage. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> kind of, sort of. Yeah, I didn't think about it that way. See, but it that, turns they, out we fell in love, so that's good. They do that good. in India, you know. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. so, uh, yeah, it was sort of an arranged marriage. Does he tell you he loves you? I think you? God arranged it, too. Does he tell you mm -hmm. he loves you? Every day. Wow. Every day. Isn't it yeah. amazing how God just takes yeah. a life? Yeah. that would, you know, we kind of think a throwaway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he just blossoms something beautiful. Yes. I and saw that over and over again in my life. You've definitely yeah. had a healing in your life somewhere along the line to, to come from that hurt yeah. child to where you are today. How did that happen? Physically, emotionally. Yeah. It, it took a long time. It wasn't overnight. That's for sure. Wow. But God, when I look back, he was guiding me through my entire Absolutely. life. Absolutely. From... Mm -hmm. The emotional aspects where I had zero self-esteem. For me to be here right now is a miracle in itself because just three years ago I would have panic attacks yeah. in my meetings at work if I had to even say my name and you know somebody new was wow. in there. Yeah. So I never ever wanted to speak in front of people, never mind on television. Yeah, she, she has in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, you saw the, the, the recipes, they were fabulous. But every section is a tremendous presentation of what the Lord can do in your life and what he's done in someone else's life which, which is it's just a neat I've never seen one displayed like that because usually a recipe book is a recipe book that's it and so you buy it for that purpose but this has got a dual you know opportunity for you to to be refreshed not only physically but spiritually but I got a kick out of you. You, you went to a, what they call the Toastmasters. Yes. And and, to be, <laughs> and if you know what the Toastmasters, they yeah. train. It's kind of like the De Dale Carnegie. Years ago in the 60s, I went to the Dale Carnegie uh, because I was so shy. I couldn't give my name. And, and I, I mean, I was just a total introvert. I mean, way down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I went to Dale Carnegie and, and they embarrassed me so bad. Well, she went to the <laughs> Toastmasters mm -hmm. and and of course, you're supposed to give a speech, and and 
so she would go to them and hear all of this other stuff going on and when it when it would get ready for your presentation what would you do I only had to say my name I remember the next time they said next time you come we're going to introduce ourselves and say something quick about yourself uh, no I was not going to go back <laughs> and do that so I tried again maybe six months later again I left in a panic so I she never left two of them I left two of them but something funny happened is um, when I started the blog I never expected a TV show to contact me and say please be on our show and I, I wanted to but I said yeah. God how am I gonna do I would picture my hyperventilation like how it would sound on the mic sure you know the heavy yeah. breathing yeah. as I'm talking my, my face would, would quiver <laughs> they thought I had palsy yeah. I mean I, I was so scary. scared yeah so um, but God I felt like he was saying I'm gonna give you the words and it's gonna be okay so for three days prior to that first television um, appearance three years ago I couldn't breathe even talking to my family I was out of breath panic three days in a row mm -hmm. I got on that stage and I felt the peace like I have never felt more comfortable than talking maybe to my own mother or my own family and it has been like that ever since and so God's with me when I do these Isn't and that? I no longer after that one experience on television do I have um, panic attacks, anxiety talking to people, now it's you, gone. You, you, you met me for the first time in a green room, right? I did. <laughs> and did you have a panic attack? No. So no panic anymore. Yeah. No wow. panic anymore. That's nope. pretty neat. It you didn't really... even bring the panic out in me. <laughs> it must be yeah, gone. So when did the Lord become so important in your life? He was always important um, since I was a child. I remember praying as a child, but I did not view him as a loving God so much as a, he'll love me when I'm good and he's going to come down on me when I'm not. So mm -hmm. I was fearful of him. So he was your father in image, your heavenly father. Was, yeah. Yeah. Was like your father. Similar to you, yeah. yeah. Except I knew he loved me. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know he was so closely involved in everything in my life. Every detail. Mm -hmm. Right. So I started listening to Charles Stanley in my 20s and I got saved. And I started hearing messages about he'll talk to you if you learn how to speak to him. Mm -hmm. He'll guide you. And I thought he will. I, I just thought you pray and you walk away. I didn't really know he does things in your life. And so uh, I started getting really strong in my faith in my 20s. And then I had a job that I didn't like for decades. So I'd plug in to, with my ears, either Charles or you know Joyce or anybody. I just wanted to hear yeah. the word. Yeah. And I didn't know God would use that eight hours a day to be listening to the word. And my life transformed and uh, my relationship with him. And I see in the book, you, she was thrilled to actually meet Charles Stanley. I did. Oh, I got to yeah. meet Charles Stanley. That was yeah. because he has done so much in my life. Oh, that's wonderful. And I, we watch him Sunday morning in bed. And for years I said to Bob, I want to meet him someday. <laughs> yeah. I really want to meet him someday. I got to meet him three years ago two, three years ago. Oh, that's wonderful. And I dedicated the book to him and I got to tell him so. So really? that was really cool. She's actually cool. St in the hallway, you know, <laughs> in his, in his meeting. Oh, that's great. And, uh, yeah, he's, now you talk about your bone broth, right? You have a bone broth recipe in here. Yes. Good? Yes. It's good. Every recipe in there is good. It you, has to be. You've tried them all? Oh yeah, I make them all. This is how I cook for the kids. And if three teenagers will eat this food, yeah. anybody will eat Creamy chicken soup. Yeah. Uh, and and she, she, she has uh, seven ways to ensure you will be <laughs> miserable. miserable. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. Uh, ditch the miserable uh, and, and set yourself free. So you, she, you have a lesson in that particular recipe area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I take a little bit of everything that's happened to, into my life. And I divided the book into three areas. The first is emotional, so I take you down the road of what happened in my childhood, yeah. and then at the end, recipes. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, physically, how I was sick for decades, and that journey, and then recipes, and then lastly, okay. God and spirituality. Sick for decades, what do you mean by that? Uh, we moved out of the Bronx when I was six into a house upstate, and it had mold issues, but we didn't know it at the time. Sure. We could oh, smell it, we would joke about it. Yeah. Um, 
so I got sick at six, just the normal asthma and allergies, but the asthma was pretty bad, just walking up my stairs to my room. You know, I'd have to inhale and steroids and my inhaler and all that. Uh, it was, um, it was stayed a status house. quo, yeah, yeah, until I moved into, I started working in Manhattan at 18, moved into an apartment that you could, it had visible mold. Wow. And I was only in that apartment nine months, but. What's with this mold following you? I don't know. <laughs> but it completely took my health down. It started with a sinus infection, and um, I was running from, you know, through Manhattan to the best ear, nose, and throat you know, years later, still on antibiotics constantly. And then after years of trying to treat the sinus infection, um, I remember getting chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. Wow. Heart arrhythmias were such a problem at one point, they considered doing an ablation. I had restless leg. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm missing. But I didn't think they were related, so I spent a lot of my time late teenager, early 20s, running from doctor to doctor trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And it actually probably took 10 years before I realized because I got a great ear, nose, and throat after about 15 years of having a constant <laughs> sinus infection. And he said, you have one of the worst, you have bacteria, yes. And they were bad bacteria, had pseudomonas and staph, hard to get rid of. He said, but you also have a severe fungal infection, like one of the most severe. And he said, it's because of all these antibiotics, all these years they had you on. Sure. It, and antibiotics are mold. So yeah. you're fueling, you know, the problem. So I started learning everything I could about fungus and I realized uh, a systemic fungal infection can cause uh, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and heart arrhythmias. And it can actually get into every organ tissue mm -hmm. that you have in your body. So when I started on antifungals and um, changed the way I eat, so this is more or less an antifungal diet. It follows Doug Kaufman's Kaufman yes. diet. So this is why you put this book together then, is because of what happened to you. Yes. And this is the way to eat. Yes, and on my search to learn about fungus, I found, of course, Doug Kaufman and started oh. eating that way. And <laughs> all he's, of a sudden- He's on just before this program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was watching him in the green yeah. room. Kind of, kind of neat. So you're, you, you were. You're and I was, I've been on his show yeah. a few times as wow. well. Yeah. And um, my world started. To, all these symptoms started to dissolve. My goodness. So it's just from the the food that antifungals. Yeah. He's healing of, that fungus. He's one of our yeah. uh, assistants' favorite guys too. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. Linda yeah. quotes him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fupo. He always says, "Fungus until proven otherwise." Yeah. If you have a condition, the doctors cannot help you with diabetes. Uh, you name it, and conventional medicine is not helping. He says FUPO, um, antifungals. Now, there's so many natural antifungals you can take, oil of oregano, uh, grapeseed extract, the food you're eating so is antifungal. So you become educated. Oh, sure. Wow. Mm. Uh, it's very uh, interesting. She, Plants she, are antifungal. She, she has uh, healing meatball soup. And, Sounds and, good. And, and, then, and then she says, healing from rejection. So yeah. you've got a whole, <laughs> a whole uh, teaching in there, yeah. yep. the area of rejection. So it's kind of, it's kind of neat how the, uh, and I just told you about the spicy fish tacos, uh, the beef fajitas, and, and then she's got a whole uh, area facing your fears. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you make that while you're eating beef fajitas, <laughs> you can read about facing your fears. Well, it sounds right. like to me that you're eating normal food. Yes. Uh, in order to fight this, the fungus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, what exactly is one of the best things that you can do to fight this? I mean, well, what feeds fungus as well as cancer? It's the same thing: carbs and sugar. They they need carbs and sugar to thrive. Ah. So, American diet, we eat so much bread and sugar. It's in everything. Yeah, carbs. So, this book, we're still eating burgers and we're eating pizza and we're eating desserts, but we're substituting a lot of things. So, instead of regular flour, we're using almond flour and um, coconut flour, you know, for the desserts mm -hmm. and even for the breads. And then removing boxed foods and yeah. uh, anything in a bag or box. And we do. Um, a lot of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. And, and you live this meat. way now? Yes. yes. And of course, I go off 
every once in a while. Yeah. I'll, I'll fall off the wagon for a day sure. or two, you know, going you out to dinner. Do you notice it immediately? My sinuses are the first ones that tell me, get back on track right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do notice it right away, and my energy level and everything, yeah. Wow. Have you ever met anybody that says, I had your life? So I many. had a father like you. I had, I had, yes. I, did, you have. Um, more so, some of that, the emotional, yes. Um, more so, there's so many sick people out there you wouldn't believe, and how cookie cutter it is. I have fibromyalgia, I have chronic fatigue, and I have and my heart, and I, and I think it's all related. And they don't, now they know it, they're getting mm -hmm. informed, or they find out, you know, from me, and they have all the same symptoms that I had. And so I love that I'm helping people. I got so, so you do that through yeah. your blog, right? Yes. So, so they get great. in touch with you and say you've helped me? Yes. You can get in touch with me through my blog. Every week it's, you know, something new. And um, yes, I get a lot of mail from people and encourage them. And they, they might say my doctor won't give me an antifungal. And so I'll steer them either on natural antifungals or Doug Kaufman actually has a place on his site. Print this out and bring it to your doctor. Tell them this is how you prescribe really? it because they they're not educated. It's not their no, fault. Not. Yeah. Yeah. They go to um, school and they learn you know oh, this yeah. much about bacteria. The pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. is what they yeah. Are show, your, show her book. I think it's such a pretty okay. It is. It is well pretty it, book. Not only is it a great uh, classy <laughs> book. Yeah. I mean this could be a coffee table book. <laughs> I mean it's it's that classy. I really like it. But Thank it you. really is. Uh, <clears throat> it, it is so. Well, that's the reason I ask. You, you, you must have supervised all the pictures and... That's all my photography in there. I have a photography degree. So well, those, boy, those are all mine. you just are multi-talented. <laughs> Goodness Thank gracious. You. But God put this on my heart in my early 20s to mm -hmm. write a book. Wow. I, well, at least it was on my heart. I believe it was from, you know, from God. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what am I going to write about? I thought maybe my childhood. And then when I started the blog, I thought, I know what my book is going to be about now. That's great. That's great. And thank you for the cookies. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and I figure even if people aren't sick physically, so many of us have been through so much yes, and yes. they can get something out of that yeah. book. If yes. they're stuck emotionally <coughs> and hurt, yeah. there's a lot about that in the book as well. And, thank you, Erwin. And, you're welcome. And can a person that just doesn't cook, they don't have that. I mean, she's an unbelievable cook. But some people just can't cook. I mean, they can't even boil water. They can get through this, right? Yes, and you're repeating a lot of the same ingredients yeah. over and over, so yeah. it's not hard. Great. Her book is great. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I've gone through <laughs> cover to cover. This is the greatest book you'll ever open today. Read at least two chapters. Okay, will you promise me that? Two chapters. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.